Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Tactics Live, episode 48. How many of you cringed when you've rubbed a rim up against a curb? I know I have. Or how many of you were driving and didn't notice that pothole and when you got that wham, that sinking feeling? Well, today's episode is gonna be about wheel repair and restoration. Um, before we get started, please, if you enjoy the show, be sure to like, subscribe and comment. It really does help us out by doing so. I uh, want to make sure we thank Pirelli, our sponsor, talking about helping us out. This show wouldn't be possible without their support. Tonight's guest, I actually learned about this guest through a, the PCA region members and they've been going to him. In fact, we were going to do our show tonight at his facility, but he is so swamped in so little space around that he actually said he would bring wheels to us. So allow me to introduce to you the owner of Rim Renew from Catonsville, Maryland, Sam Friedman. Sam, come on in. Thank you for joining us Absolutely. and thank you for bringing all the goodies. Um, for those of you that are watching live tonight, we are monitoring the live chat area. So you've, if you have questions for Sam, I'm going to be looking down at my computer and hopefully get those answered for you. But we've, uh, we've hung out a little bit. You can come a little bit closer. I won't bite. Um, you know, we've, we've already asked him a slew of questions just being car people, and we probably could have done half the show already with what, what we talked about. Um, but we've got, a, we've got a schedule and an agenda that we follow with this show. So I'm going to ask Robert to throw up tonight's agenda. And we're going to be talking about the common types of wheel repairs. We're going to be talking about the types of refinishing options. At what point is a wheel unfixable? And then from you know, the machinist side, from the welding side, what's easy, what's hard to work with, and how that might affect the cost of the repair, and whether or not you're going to move forward with that. So Sam's got a wealth of information. We only have about an hour, and I know it's going to go by very quickly. So let's just jump right into it. Let's just talk about how do you classify the types of repairs? OK, so for us, first of all, Vil, thank you for having me. and. I hope this is a great resource to everybody in the PCA. Um, at, at my shop, we classify things in, in three different buckets. Uh, bent wheels, cracked wheels, and refinishing wheels. Now, refinishing can encompass the curb rash that you were discussing, or it could just be restoration work. But either way, we're refinishing it. So that's the bucket that it's in. Um, so those are the three types of wheel repair that we, generally speaking, so Talk just about. in general, um, I, I believe you've been in this business for about, what, a decade or a little yeah, bit more? A little bit more, yeah. Um, in the last decade or so, rim sizes have grown tremendously on cars. Mm -hmm. Has that affected your business? Absolutely, yeah. So again, generally speaking, the larger the wheel gets, the skinnier the tire gets or the, the lower the aspect the, the, ratio gets, right. yeah. And especially from a bent wheel perspective or a cracked wheel perspective, the only thing between the wheel and the road, those potholes that you were talking about, yep. is, is the tire. Right. So as that aspect ratio gets smaller and smaller, uh, the margin for error uh, gets, gets smaller and smaller. And if you think about it in terms of uh, what's happening when you hit a pothole, um, there's, there's give, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's give in the suspension or give in that tire. Um, you know, I'm standing next to a, to a Fuchs wheel here. Yeah. Um, you, you know, on this era, 911, you had a, you had big, a old cushion. big old cushion, right? right? And so, and, that, and that, that tire literally compresses as you, as you go over things. It's part of the suspension. Um, but as we get newer and newer cars with lower and lower profile tires, that tire has less to give. And not necessarily specific to Porsches, but as you introduce run flats into that equation also, that sidewall is extremely stiff, so it can support the weight of the vehicle without air pressure. But then there's no cushion. So there's no cushion there, yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, as the wheels get bigger and the tires get smaller and stiffer, uh, and roads don't necessarily <laughs> get any better. Right, right. Well, let's, let's start with the basics. Um, uh, uh, this car here, this uh, 911, 996, this, I can tell the 
The wheel has been refinished, um, must have had curb rash at some point. It looks to me that it was painted mm -hmm. and it's already flaking off of the wheel. So to me, I'm probably thinking that's, you know, either poor uh, prep for paint or it was just a quick, you know, curbside job where the guy, mobile guy comes up and just sprays it and sure. along, along the way as you go. Um, talk about, you know, some of the most basic repairs. I mean, if you're a DIY person, there are kits out there that you can buy and you can just buy one color paint and kind of blend it and make it look mm -hmm. okay and step 20 feet away and maybe that's good enough for you. Or there's like multiple paint systems where you can put some putty, sand it down, put a base coat, uh, and then put a special clear. Also a do it yourself. I've tried all of them. We all have. And I, I, granted, I'm not a professional painter. I've had decent results, mm -hmm. but never have I ever had OEM results mm. so uh, and i showed you earlier there's a kit in this in this uh closet right here that i bought with the best of intentions to do it but i just can't bring myself to finish especially on a porsche um to, to finish a wheel that's not perfect and mm. so that's where you kind of come come into the picture a lot of pcaers in the chesapeake region here come to you um to refinish their wheels so from the diy kits what are you doing that's different okay so I think that the proper analogy here is kind of like a body shop. You scrape the bumper on a, on, on a parked car on, a, on the side of your garage. Um, you can sand down the bumper. You can spray it yourself. Um, th those things are all possible, same as a wheel. Or you can take it to a body shop and have them do it with professional materials, with professional uh, uh, paint guns, professional paints. Um, and it's, it's pretty similar with the wheel. Uh, again, it depends on what you're working on and, and what you want to do. Um, the good news is if you ever try it by yourself as a DIY solution uh, and you don't like the results, if you take it to a professional, all of that can be stripped off and, re fix, and redone. Fix yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah. your DIY yeah, job. Yes, yeah. Uh, and and we, we, do that, we do that all the time. People come to us and they're like, uh, this didn't work out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> you tried. Yeah, you, you tried, tried, and that's fine. Okay. Um, but um, so it's, it's very similar that there, there is a way to paint a wheel on your own, mm -hmm. and it's prep is, is the key there, no different than a bumper would be. Um, and uh, even a professional might paint a rim, especially, to your point, the mobile guys that go to dealerships. Mm -hmm. That's what they do, and they usually end up with pretty good results. Mm -hmm. Now, how long that result holds up right. is you know, somewhat based on prep, somewhat based on product, and somewhat based on how much they took care of what they were doing. Right, and back to your body shop analogy, mm -hmm. you know, if some guy did a mobile bumper repair, sure. Same thing. you know, in a parking lot, it's gonna be a different f result from doing a bumper in a controlled in a, environment right, at in a, a true booth. body, yes. in a yeah. true body shop. Yeah, um, and so that true body shop analogy, um, if you take it to a rim shop that is set up as uh, doing things um, you know, the correct way, if you will, uh, it's, it's a powder coating situation. Okay. So, and with powder coat, first of all, you have that, that sealed environment of a booth, uh, but also the product is much, much stronger than paint, uh, thicker, uh, and, it, and it holds up. So are, are most OEM wheels painted or powder coated? Powder coated. They're powder coated. powder coated. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Most OEM wheels are powder coated. Okay. But, uh, you know, I also say this standing next to a chrome wheel. Right, right. And a Fuchs wheel, which some of those were and this anodized was, this was, this back was like in the a day. Third party chrome yeah, 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 probably was. Yeah. Um, but uh, so it's not to say all of them, but the vast, vast majority. Okay. Over, and you, over that 90%. makes sense because powder coating is definitely going to be more durable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're talking about heat and, you know, even just like when it's spinning and debris hitting it, paint will not withstand sort of that abuse like a powder coated. Sure, paint sure. And, and uh, you know, it's no different than that front bumper. Uh, I'm sure everybody out there has a front bumper that has some paint chips on it. Mm -hmm. That That's, you know, if, if your face was on that front that's bumper. That's the same abuse. Yeah, yeah it, it, doing 70 miles an hour down the interstate, there's stuff flying at you. And, and the wheels, uh, especially with low profile tires, they're sitting one inch off of the pavement. Right. Stuff's coming at them too. So right. to see a paint chip or even a paint chip in powder coat is is not on So let's of. let's use this car as an example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it comes in, it's got curb rash on it. 
you're, are you stripping the whole painted surface? And yes. then, you know, if unfortunately, if they've hit the curb hard, mm -hmm. you know, how do you, how do you bring, what do you do with the metal? Like, do you sure. fill it? Do you put more metal in it or? Yeah. So, um, it depends on the depth of the curb rash, but yes, every wheel gets stripped. Uh, and back is that bare mechanically metal. or chemically? Uh, yes. It, it depends oh, okay. on, it depends. yeah, it depends on, on the wheel. Uh, and, and honestly, it depends on the shop. Mm. You know, there, there, there are different methods uh, to it. Uh, and it depends on the state uh, because some of the chemicals used to strip the wheels are highly toxic and they're okay. very dangerous and they are um, um, controlled, monitored, if you will, um, by, by departments of, of the environment. Oh, so your um, state might not allow you to do that process. Right. Gotcha. Right. Um, so, but, but then uh, in terms of fixing the actual curb rash, like on that, that screenshot there, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's fairly light, it's, you sand it out, sand it smooth, feather out the edges. Okay. Uh, and, and again, going back to the DIY, something that, that if, if, you're, if, you're, uh, you know, if you're handy, right. you can do yourself, um, and sand it all out and make it smooth and then coat it, whether, again, DIY being paint or powder. Um, uh, if, if it's very deep, curb rash, um, and we see this a lot from body shop wheels because we do a lot of body shop insurance work. When it's a big hit and a scoop of metal taken out, yeah, yeah that needs to be, metal gets welded into those. Okay. Okay, so we're welding in new aluminum to those areas uh, and then smoothing it out, making it uh, back to the contour of the wheel. Right. And then so that's, that's metal working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so you've stripped the wheel, you've fixed the roughness of it. You primarily, like you said, OEM cars are mostly powder coat now, so do you always powder coat or do you polish? Do you offer different finishes? Yeah, there are many different finishes. Um, polished wheels um, is, is one of them. Uh, with an OEM wheel, Porsche, the, um, the Panamera, I want to say 11, 12, 13, they had a five split spoke wheel uh, that, that was, had painted pockets and then a polished fin going oh, up right, these right. spokes. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. uh, that was a polished wheel, but it had a clear coat then powder coated on top of it. Um, then there are machined wheels, um, which, which need to be cut on a, on a lathe. Yep. Some people call it um, diamond cutting. Diamond cutting, yes. Uh, and, and, or some people just call it a machined wheel. Right. It's semantics. Um, so at that point, I'm gonna lean down here and grab one. Um, you know, th this lip on this wheel is a machined, a machined wheel, a uh, machined lip. So, so hopefully it, Damon can pick up, you can see the texture you, yeah, you of it. It's not, it's not just straight polish. There's like, you can see like fine lines, like a diamond went in there exactly. and cut that pattern into it. Exactly. The, the other way we sometimes describe this to, <clears throat> to customers is if, if, if they're old enough, it's, it's almost has like grooves, like a record, yeah. like a piece of exactly. you know, a, a, a vinyl record. So we, we did this earlier and I guess, right. So the audience that's watching tonight, can you guys tell me what wheel this came from? Throw, throw up your guesses of what wheel this came from. Obviously a Porsche, but what wheel? So talking about um, powder coating, we, we got a question here from JD. Is it necessary or is it even advised to clear coat over a freshly polished wheel? Yeah, so the, the option of clear coating over a polished wheel comes up a lot from the factory. <coughs> It's always, pol it's always clear coated. Mm -hmm. The idea being, if you clear coat over it, you won't need to, <coughs> excuse me, you won't need to ever polish it again because it's sealed in. It seals in okay. the polish. Okay. However, you need to know that it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. That clear coat will eventually fail on that polished wheel because right. it's a very slick surface that you're uh, trying to get this powder coat to adhere to long term. Right. Um, so the other option is don't clear coat it, which is fine. However, uh, you're, you're, always you're, you're going to need to polish it depending upon how much you drive it. If it's a daily, if it's a show car, you're right. going to have to polish it once a year, twice a year, something to that effect. So, um, so speaking of finishes and because I'm holding on to a Fuchs, now this Fuchs was um, chromed at some point, 
but original Fuchs come with an anodized lip. Mm. So tell me about that. Like if, if, if one of our uh, members with a G-Body 911 and has Fuchs and you know, curbs their anodized rim, what's, what's the option for them? Well, two options. Uh, one is there are companies out there uh, that will strip the anodization off of them and and and, and go re, back to the bare wheel and redo it yeah and re-anodize it um it's not something that we've ever gotten into just because there aren't that many wheels out there to make it economically uh necessary for right. us um what we do is when we restore fuchs wheels and th and this kind of depends on the customer and 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 the car mm -hmm. you know if it's a perfect car and it needs to be the way it was a hundred point a hundred point yeah. Then it needs to be it needs to be reanodized. Right. There's just no two ways about it. Um, but if it's a driver and it's a nice driver, but the wheels are showing their age and right. they want to bring them back, then what we do is we'll we'll take off the anodization, we'll powder coat it, and what we do with the lips is we'll put we'll put them on the lathe mm -hmm. and actually just just barely machine off that top layer, maybe two three thousandths of an inch, uh, and then we'll do a uh, usually on a Fuchs wheel. Uh, a satin or 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 almost a matte clear to, to mimic, to the, mimic look, the, the look look of an yeah. anodized wheel yeah. oh that's interesting yeah wow okay we have another question here um because we were talking about um powder coating uh when you powder coat a wheel people some have said it weakens, weakens the, wheel the wheel because you're yeah. heating it up mm -hmm. to, tell us the truth about that okay so um from a metal aspect if you heat up metal and cool it down, can it have that weakening effect? Yes. However, uh, when we powder coat a wheel, in general terms, most powder coats are done between 350 and 400 degrees. Okay? Uh, aluminum anneals or gets very weakened by heat at 660 degrees. So we're well short of that. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you have concerns about that, that's fine. Um, and, and there is there a percentage, potentially a percentage, um, a fraction of a percentage of weak, weakening? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, however, what I would say is these wheels are usually engineered well past the weight of the vehicle that they're going with anyway. Um, the bigger issue with powder coating is application. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, if you're tracking a car, okay, um, and this, I've, this discussion I've actually had with BBS. Uh, if you're tracking a vehicle, BBS would tell you to powder coat uh, the wheel that you're tracking uh, might negatively impact the heat dissipation capability of the wheel because the powder coat does have a thickness to it, mm. okay? Whereas the paint will let the aluminum dissipate the heat quicker. Right. Uh, and again, if, if you're tracking the vehicle and you, you're good at what you do, uh, you're heating the, the the stuff out of the front the front brakes and getting them and the that heat from the brakes goes to the wheel right and you want the wheel to cool off um, so and at that uh, point you're not worried about how it looks <laughs> yeah at that point you're probably not worried about how it looks but um, um, you know okay. uh, it, it, it's it's not an exact answer it's not a a uh, hundred percent answer I can give you that it's right for everybody to powder coat or or it's not. Um, but if you're that worried about it because you're driving your car that hard, yeah, okay, yeah, then, no, then, that's then valid. go with paint. That's valid, yeah. right? So let's bring back that that gold wheel. And since no one, I don't think anyone guessed what wheel that came from. Well, um, one person did. Did it? Vu did. I did. Yes, did. I did. I called it right away. So this is from a, C, a 996 C4. But the reason why you probably don't recognize it is because it's in a very unique finish, this uh, gold and the, the special lip. It is gorgeous. I mean, this combination um, is beautiful. And so that, that, the, the reason why I wanted you to bring this up is because you changed this. I think this is normally just a normal silver wheel mm -hmm. with, with the lip. lip. Mm -hmm. uh, here you did, uh, we, we talked about fixing curb rash or fixing um, dents and such in, in a wheel or bends in the wheel, but this was purely a cosmetic change. Yeah. And so this is a three-piece wheel, so maybe can you share with us? Well, this one, or this two one is, a, a two is a two-piece two wheel, piece. yeah. So um, on the back side, um, you can see what, what we did here was we, we 
we did a normal sparkle silver on the back just to clean it up. Uh, and then the gold on the face. Um, and then machine that front lip. And you end up with a wheel that, yeah, I think is, is it's really, gorgeous. really cool looking. Um, so here, but, here is one thing that we talked about earlier. And uh, Helmet DVM uh, posted asking about it. And I think it's so important is oh, you see all this beautiful powder coat. You see how it's nicely finished. However, you see the mating surface here looks unfinished. It is, there is no powder coat mm. there. And I know of, I won't name names, <laughs> but there's been other wheel companies when they go and paint, they also painted that area. Mm. And that was a big no-no and I didn't realize that. And you want to share why that's a no-no to, to paint this, this area yeah, too? Yeah, well, especially with powder coat, because a powder coat does have a bit of a thickness to it, uh, if you, and, and it's essentially plastic, right? right. And powder coat is, is usually poly, polyester and urethanes, and it's plastic. So if you get it on this mating surface um, and don't remove it, mm -hmm. okay, um, then you have an extra layer between the hub and the wheel. And if it, if it comes loose even just a bit, you can have a situation where the, the wheel will then have, or the lug will then have a little bit of space that it can wiggle and start to, start to back off. That's exactly uh, it. Yeah. So what we do, again, at our shop is, first of all, there's, there's more than one way to powder coat a wheel. A lot of shops, especially big, big production shops, um, will hang the wheel from the lug hole mm -hmm. and do the whole wheel as it's hanging. So inevitably, you get a ton of material right on there that. on the hub. Uh, we actually have a system where we mount the wheel to a mating surface uh, that goes in onto a, what we call a tree and it gets pushed into the oven. So this area is pretty much always covered. Oh, nice. Okay. However, we always inspect them when they come out. And if any powder did get here, mm -hmm. uh, then we, we just take it off. We, you know, we, we either chip it off and it comes off real quick because it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place, or we'll just sand it off with a, with a sander because it'll just be on like one spot back here. And how I came to learn about it is a buddy of mine, GB, shout out to you. Um, it had powder coat on that surface mm -hmm. and it introduced a vibration in his steering oh, yes. wheel and yeah. we chased it down forever where like the wheel is balanced yeah. we tightened the lugs we torqued them right mm -hmm. and there was it just never would go away and turned out is because there was powder coat on the back of it yeah and well and that's the other thing that we do uh, and especially with a two-piece wheel or a three-piece wheel uh once the wheel is done and it also might just be because i'm a neurotic person uh is we we spin them all on the balancer uh, mm -hmm. And the balancer that we spin them on doesn't have a hood. We, we, we've taken oh, the hood okay. off yep. and we watch the wheel spin. Yeah. And so if you see it spinning perfectly straight, you put it together That's right. That's pretty basic. Or, <laughs> right, it's pretty basic. Yeah. Uh, or the, the hub is clean. Um, it's interesting. I got a three-piece wheel over here that we're, we were putting together in the shop today. And one of my guys took it over to the balancer and he said, I, I put it together, but it's spinning terribly. And mm -hmm. I came over and I looked and I said, did you check the back of the hub? He goes, ah, oh. there you go. Yeah. And there was a big chunk of powder coat just sitting there. Yeah. And I, I took a little, uh, uh, almost like a spackle uh, yep. knife and went like this. It fell off. And I said, now spin it. And it spun perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Now, is that the, does that go for the same for where the, um, the lugs, lugs sit? 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 Yeah. So you have to clear those out too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and usually that's more of a protected area from the front. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's not, and, and, and actually the Fuchs wheel again, as a great example of this, the Fuchs wheel has very exposed lug holes. Yes. Uh, so those we're very careful with because that lug is not recessed. Uh, that lug hole is not recessed. It's, it's, it's right up here at the surface um, versus, you know, again, that C4 wheel or, you know, if you look at some of these other wheels, those lugs are deep set in there. So the powder coat doesn't really find its way down. Uh, it, with powder coat, uh, the way that it's, uh, the way it sticks to the wheels, the static, is it, right? it's, it's, yeah, it's electrostatically charged. And so it's electricity. Electricity always looks for the shortest path. Mm -hmm. No different than lightning hitting the top of the building, not the bottom floor. So on a wheel like this, this might be the shortest path into you know, the lug hole because it, that lug hole is so high up. Yeah. On, on more modern wheels, they're always so deeper recessed. in. So it's, so it's not nearly as much okay. of a concern. So um, another question someone had was with regards to you, you've, um, you, we talked about paint, we talked about powder coat, 
and we talked about chrome a little bit mm -hmm. um, but some of these wheels and I think you brought one big wheel here to talk about it wasn't Ugh. bent uh, initially it wasn't bent but it was corroded and I didn't I learned this today I didn't know the difference between rust and corrosion and if you look at this Fuchs wheel this is a originally was a forged aluminum wheel that was chromed and you see this heavy pitting and it's not orange like the traditional rust that you think of but it's like it's eating away at the rim and i was asking sam like how did that happen and you actually had a more modern wheel mm -hmm. where the same thing was happening so maybe you can explain yeah to our i mean viewers. so this is a, a gmc wheel i think this truck was a 2017 so not old at all um but what happens is when dirt grime road salt brake dust get uh kind of ground in especially right there in the bead where the tire is pushing all this dirt into the wheel um, aluminum corrodes steel rusts aluminum corrodes and what happens is this corrosion uh, ends up bubbling up and it's starting to flake off the chrome plating and when that happens it creates air passageways for the air to just start slowly leaking slow out leaks, of the right. uh, uh, yeah slowly leaking out of the uh and then the i think the in, in this case if they didn't notice the slow leak now your your cushion of a it already had a thin uh sidewall now it's even thinner and less protection because yep. of no air now you hit a curb and we got and a, kaboom you yep. get uh this is probably from a pothole hit yep. um and you know what's amazing is this is a this is a truck with with a this is a 285 45 22 it's a, it's a decent sized sidewall that sits here but still hit a, hit a big enough pothole and maybe it was a little low on air because of that corrosion and bent it the good news here is this sort of bend is repairable okay okay um this is a what's called a radial bend um where it dips down from the the circle uh -huh. um and so that's the radial part of the bend, and if we take this angle on things, where it's kind of sticking out that way a little yep. bit, that's the that's a lateral bend. But this radial and lateral bend can be can be straightened out with uh, really without an issue. So I haven't been to your shop. Is there a machine that you put up and it pushes and tugs and pulls, or yes. are you beating on it with a hammer? No, 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 no. <laughs> no hammers involved. So okay. When you involve hammers, this is why this is not a DIY thing. Okay. okay? When you involve hammers with aluminum, uh, aluminum does not like quick strikes. Oh. Okay. Uh, and so it's very possible, and we see this all the time. Somebody will bring in a wheel, yeah. and you'll see it's bent, and then you'll see a lot of marks on this side. And I was like, <laughs> so who hit it with a hammer? That it wasn't me. It wasn't right me. Yeah. Uh, and, and then it'll be cracked. Oh. Uh, so you, you, you just end up exacerbating the problem. Uh, so... If you have a wheel like this, yeah, it, it goes on a machine. Um, there are a couple different out there that are sold. Um, we like the couple that we have. Um, but basically, once it gets bolted to the machine through the lug holes, uh, the wheel can spin on the machine, and the machine will read the run out uh, and where it's bent. And this is kind of a classically bent wheel. And what will happen on this when we actually read the run out, this will be a super low spot. And then right around here, because of that hit, it'll it bowed out, bowed out there okay, gotcha. and it'll suck the bottom in. Ah. Okay. So it'll essentially have sort of four, four. So uh, we only spots. visibly see, see this, this, but really like, the whole wheel is messed yeah, up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so once it goes on the machine, we know where it needs to be pushed on. At that point, the machine that we use is essentially a big glorified hydraulic press, but it's a handheld press. It, it has uh, 10 tons of force, so we're pushing with 20,000 pounds. Wow. Uh, but it's a nice, slow, slow push. And it's controlled. not that, yeah, and it's very controlled. Yeah. And so we, we'll push up here, we'll push down there, we'll push out there, and then we'll push over, and eventually we'll get it back to, to being straight. So back to you know, the reason why this form channels and leaked was because of this corrosion. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that in refinishing this wheel? Yeah, so because of EPA laws, we can't refinish chrome wheels. Uh, there are shops that do chrome in Maryland, wheels you in Maryland. Okay, yes. gotcha. Um, most of the chrome shops, ironically, are out in California where we've got very strict environmental laws, 
but they've been operating for so long that they con- in. <laughs> they've continued to, to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a couple Chrome shops um, outside of California. I know of some in, in Texas and one in Pennsylvania, uh, but they're pretty few and far between. Yeah. Um, and whether they will do a wheel is also another question because a yeah. lot of them, they just want to do bumpers and, and stuff on classic cars because there's more money in it yeah. uh, than, you know, than a modern so the, day wheel. The reason why I brought this wheel in, for those of you that might have a G-Body car or running Fuchs that, especially West Coast uh, G-Body cars, you know, it was a lot of Fuchs were chromed out there. Like that was the, you know, was in the, the 80s and yeah. 90s, like everybody chromed and put, you know, gold and stuff like that on there. Um, you know, I, I brought this wheel in or I bought these wheels originally because they're, they were um, sevens and eights, but this corrosion, and I showed it to Sam, and what I think we took a picture there is we're not so sure once you take off this chrome coating, like, is there much of a wheel mm-hmm. left? Yeah. Um, so we don't know the fate of this wheel, and that's why, honestly, I haven't sent it anywhere because I wanted a pro to kind of take a look at and see if it's was worth saving but when when i got these wheels they had tires on them and from the outside they didn't look so bad right but once i dismounted the wheels and i saw all this crazy corrosion on the inside i knew enough that it wasn't safe to put on my car um and they've just been sitting there so but yeah the the only other thing that i'll add is we see this exacerbated if anyone ever uses fix a flat oh uh, yeah f- okay. the fix a flats always have and i'm not just picking on that brand yeah. pick any brand of it but um they always have some amount of of ammonia in particular which is very corrosive and will eat into the aluminum and and make this worse especially if it gets if it sits in there if you got to use it in a pinch that's fine then immediately once you have the chance go to a shop have the tire taken off have it cleaned out have the the rim cleaned off and get that stuff out of there okay okay let's grab that that furthest wheel i think sure. that is one from our German cousin here, a BMW wheel. Yes. And uh, the re- reason why I wanted to bring this one up is because, you know, customers will bring you one wheel sometimes because mm-hmm. that's the only wheel that's damaged. Uh, and uh, one of our viewers today was asking, how do you match it? Oh, color match? Color match, yeah. Um, color match is, again, in our shop, the way we do it, uh, some of these wheels we just see time and time and time again because they're so common and we know exactly what what the color is just based on experience. Other times, we have to color match. And so it's no different than taking your car to a body shop uh, because the fender got messed up and they got to color match it and it's a, the hood's a little faded, the door's yeah. a little faded. So, um, w- that you know, we color match it just like a body shop with, 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 uh, with different chips and, and we'll eventually get there. Um, I'm going to test your knowledge. Yeah. So a standard Porsche wheel, mm-hmm. is, that, is there a certain code for that color? Uh, Porsche has, a, I'm sure Porsche has, has a code for it. Okay. Um, but because we deal in powders, we've got... Oh, the powder e- equivalent. E- okay. powder, yeah, yeah. So they, some of these manufacturers will give you a paint code. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Porsche has a couple in, and it, and it depends on if you have access to uh, a paint mixing system. Uh, like a PPG or a BASF or, or what have you. Uh, but if you have access or you know somebody who works at a body shop who has it, they can look it up in the computer, and a lot of times there will be a paint color to match that wheel. Uh, but a lot of times there isn't. Because uh-huh. the other thing is, you know, uh, going back to that C4 wheel, Porsche didn't make that. Right. That's a BBS wheel. Right. Right. Uh, this wheel, uh, this BMW wheel, BMW didn't make this wheel either. Right. Uh, who did? usually on the back uh it's made in hungary mm. uh it doesn't say but a, a lot of times it'll but it's be, not the manufacturer they, right a lot, a lot of times it'll be ronal right. or it'll be bbs um you know um uh, and a lot of other you know gm a lot of their wheels just say made in china and we, yeah. you know so i want to jump around a little bit because yeah. uh, uh, someone had asked uh, once you've gotten everything finished, they want to make sure they take care of their wheels. And the wheel weights, uh, more often than not, are you know, Porsches and our nicer cars. We don't have the old school hammer-on weights. We have tape weights. Right. Um, but to, to rebalance them, you have to take these weights off and this terrible adhesive is on it. What do you recommend to use to clean the adhesive and not damage the finish? Sure. Um, 
with, with that sort of thing, we use a plastic um, scraper, which, and the plastic, we use plastic so it won't scratch. Mm -hmm. And then the, res the residue yep. that's left, uh, we usually use a, uh, a petroleum-based degreaser, okay. uh, which, uh, which won't damage the, any paint or powder coat. Okay, so yeah. a degreaser and not some sort of paint thinner. <laughs> no, 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 no paint wipe. thinner. Yeah, now, I mean, powder coat will hold up the paint thinner, but if you don't know if it's powder coat or if it's paint, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't use paint thinner. Okay. Um, and then, or, or if, again, if you're doing this at home, Hey, goof off, goo gone, mm -hmm. any one of those will work and, and it shouldn't affect the, the finish. Okay. All right, so now that we're looking at this tire, let's talk about uh, the types of damages that not is in a bend. This is a crack. This is a crack, yeah. And, this uh, is a pretty tip. well, I'll show you this one in particular. This is a pretty typical crack uh, for what we see uh, every day of the week, okay? You'll, you'll have a slow leak, you won't know why. You'll take it to a shop and say, I think I have a nail in my tire. They'll say, there's no nail in the tire. Sometimes they'll spot the crack. Sometimes, sometimes they won't. Sometimes it's so dirty, they don't and see it. And sometimes it's so dirty. Yeah. yeah, I actually cleaned this wheel before we came here, just, just so we could see it. But that's what it'll look like. That's a pretty typical uh, backside crack on a wheel. That is perfectly repairable. So is this okay. ground and then re-welded? Yeah, the, what, what we do is we grind off all the paint or powder that's around it. Mm -hmm. Slice it open you even make further, bigger? make it bigger uh -huh. because you got to clean out oh, the debris dirt that's, in there. that's in there. Yeah. Okay. So to weld on aluminum, everything has to be perfectly clean. If it's not, it will contaminate the weld and the person will be back within a month because the weld will pop open. Is that the same for steel wheels too? No, steel's different. Steel, you can weld when it's a bit dirty, okay. uh, but steel wheels, generally speaking, don't crack. <laughs> and if they do, you just buy a new one. You just buy a new one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, so, but that's a pretty typical crack. That is repairable. And if that's all this wheel had Half, done to it, fine. Good. We're good. We'll repair it. Done. But under However, that hand. <laughs> under this hand, you'll see that there are three more cracks Man, uh, and big ones at that because, you know, some of these go pretty deep into the. Uh, it passed the past the bead. Not so, to make fun of our DC friends, but this looks like a DC. It wheel. might be a DC wheel, <laughs> but this one, yeah. So this one has literally four cracks in it. And now there's four cracks on this wheel. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of labor. Is the labor cost going to render this wheel not worth it, or? Well, this wheel in particular, maybe. Yeah. Um, but what renders it non, not repairable, is the fact that. Industry standard for, uh, if you ask most professional wheel repair companies, industry standard is no more than two cracks, no more than two welds in any one wheel. Okay. So why? Uh, usually because it's like, well, okay, if you've cracked it four times, there's either something inherently wrong with this wheel, mm -hmm. or there's something wrong with the suspension in the car that it's not doing its job and you're just slamming into these potholes instead of right. going over them. Uh, and something else needs to be addressed. The other thing is, you know, truthfully, from a liability perspective, um, uh, you know, enough's enough. Yeah, your family's it, riding on this fine, wheel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's get you a new wheel. Okay. Um, but and, technically, but, you could. Yeah, so the, the welder in me would say, I can weld four cracks. What's but, the big deal? But the business owner in me says, get no, a new no, wheel. No, get a new wheel. Get a new wheel. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting. We took, we had a cracked wheel uh, come into the shop a couple weeks ago. And as we were, it just had one crack. We fixed it. As we were putting it back on the car, um, the customer was there. And I said, you might want to have your suspension checked out. And, and I kind of looked under. My guy was under the car. And I said, you know what? Yeah, the shock is leaking. Oh. He's like, it's leaking? And I grabbed the shock. And as I grabbed the shock to show him where it was leaking, the whole thing wiggled in my oh, hand. Geez. The bottom had rusted out and had sheared off. So he had no shock. So that's why he had cracked the wheel. A lot of times it's, an, it, it's, a, it's a symptom of a greater problem. greater problem. Yeah. All right, well, let's pause right here because I know we want to look at that wheel, but let's, let's answer some questions from some of our viewers here. Um, so we're going to kind of go through these quickly. So let's see. Uh, can a wheel with peeling paint be refinished with the tire on it? And that is from Tom S. Okay. Uh, yeah, so at that point you'd be talking about painting the wheel because if the tire's on it, can't, can't you, you can't go into an oven. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, the, the, the guys that go around to the lots, 
uh, they can do, do this. It. Yeah, they do it. And if you want to do it at home, the, the big thing there is once that paint is peeling, you've got to sand it back enough right. that you have good paint. Have good paint uh, and also taper that edge if you if you find that okay it stopped peeling now you got to smooth out that edge so you don't see a line under right. your paintwork and then beyond that uh, do a really nice job taping off the tire the reason why I say that is twofold number one you don't want a silver tire um, uh, but number two the tire usually has some remnant of a tire shine mm -hmm. here or there yeah and that's all silicon based and that will mess up your paintwork because you'll get fish eyes very quickly. Can, can I be honest and tell you that I use playing cards and I just stuff playing cards that's, that's in, between the, in between the rubber and the It doesn't, have to, it doesn't <laughs> have to be taped. It doesn't have to be taped. I just stuffed it on and just yeah. shot it. Yeah. Oh man, I'm telling you guys way too much. And, uh, and also tape off the valve stem. Yeah. There's a silver valve stem, you know, if it's a rubber valve stem or even if it's a metal TPMS stem. Tape that off. Uh, pop the center cap out if you can. And also if you're doing it on the car, Especially if it's a Porsche and it's got nice big you oh, know, red yeah. brakes, put some t put put some paper, some tape over that brake and over the rotor. The rotor, if you get overspray on the rotor, not the biggest deal. That will wear off as you drive, but it doesn't sound really good the first couple of times you hit the brake. Five lugs is all you need to yeah, take I off. Mean, I mean, if you don't want to take the tire off, that's one thing. But take five lugs off and just work on the wheel by I itself. Agree. Right? I agree. So. All right, there you go. That was for Tom S. Um, Kenneth Hang is asking, are forge wheels stronger than alloy wheels? Yes. Okay, moving along. <laughs> uh, it's not to say you can't bend or crack a forged wheel, because you can. You can. Uh, but they do tend to hold up better. That said, uh, sometimes forged wheels do not like being welded. So if you do crack a forged wheel, uh, just know that sometimes because of the the different alloys that they might have used. Sometimes forged wheels don't like being welded. I'm thinking, especially because we're at a PCA thing here, uh, Fiskies. Yeah. Fiskies do not like being welded. Mm. And so if you crack a Fisky, just know that sometimes they're repairable, sometimes, sometimes they're, not. they're not. Okay. Oh, here's the latest fad. Um, JR Fro, anyone experiencing using vinyl wrap for wheels? Yeah, so it's, it's actually a really good question. Vinyl wrap, I mean, for the whole car, for wheel. It's come a long is, way. It, yeah, it's come a long way, and it's very cool. What I would say is just be, be cognizant that whether you're doing the whole vehicle or you're doing the wheel, a wrap isn't the greatest still at going around really tight radiuses. Mm. So if you've got a wheel that has a nice big flat surface, like this BMW wheel, and you just want to change the color of the, the face of it, mm -hmm. uh, that mm. might work out pretty well because it's a nice flat surface. Um, but looking at, you know, uh, some of the other wheels around here, uh, wrapping around radiuses that are I increasing and decreasing, uh, uh, or, then it, can or, get it can get complicated and sometimes it might peel. All right. So speaking of peeling, mm. um, and I'm not going to try to say a brand cause I don't want to make fun <laughs> of a brand, but there is a thing. People buy stuff that comes out of a can and they spray it all over the wheel and it kind of peel yeah. and what's left on it. I'll say the brand. Uh, <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. Uh, no, uh, they're made. They're made to, to protect your hands for tools for originally. Yeah. yeah. So um, Plasti Dip. Uh, it, it's actually I find it to be a pretty cool concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because what we we actually we don't use it in the shop, but I tell customers if you're not sure that you want to change the wheel to being gold, mm -hmm. or you're not sure you want a black wheel, go buy some Plasti Dip, and try it out. And if you like the look of it being black then you or can do green, then we can do it permanent for you. Um, the big trip, trick with the Plasti Dip is this. If you're going to do it, it, they will tell you, use six to ten coats. What a lot of people will do is they'll do it, they'll put on two coats, maybe three. Hey, it looks good. Why do I need six to ten? Mm -hmm. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, and then what will happen is it actually makes it uh, way less, it, obviously it's way thinner, uh, and it'll actually start to peel in like a bubble. little spots yep. or bubble. Um, and then you're like, oh, this looks terrible. And you try to peel off the whole thing yeah. and it won't. It'll just break off in little pieces. But if you do the six to ten coats that the, whatever the manufacturer is, is recommending, you'll find it's more durable. And when you do say, okay, I'm done with this, uh, it'll all peel off in one sheet because it's thick enough 
to, that to actually topic peel off. did not go where I thought it was going to go because I've gone to so many car shows where people probably only put two or three mm -hmm. and once they heat up their wheels it looks terrible mm -hmm. and then they start peeling it and it, and it doesn't come off yeah. all and then I see partially peeled yeah. so that's why they didn't put and enough that's coats. why they didn't put enough coats mm. on so there's a good and, tip for you and, if you and want another to try. tip if you have done it already uh, and you want it off uh, and it won't peel off mineral spirits go to Home Depot or Lowe's mineral spirits it won't affect the fin finish underneath but it'll basically melt it off it still takes some work yeah. uh, but if you put it on there let it uh, do its work and then hit it with a power washer usually that's the best way to do it mm, okay um, also you know we talk about this a lot lately is ceramic coating does it help the painted wheels or even powder coated powder wheels? Uh, yeah does it help sure um, what we tell people with care of their wheels whether you just bought a brand new car and it's factory fresh or you've brought it to a shop and they've been powder coated or they've even been painted whatever the state of the wheels the way to take care of it is the same way you take care of the rest of the car if you have a product that you'd use on the rest of the car whether it be car wash wax ceramic coating polish feel free mm. you can use it at the, on the wheel if you wouldn't use it on the rest of the car don't use it on the wheel so wheel cleaners stiff bristle brushes anything like that um, yeah it might the powder coat be more durable than than the paint sure mm -hmm. but the the wheel cleaners are always acid based if you read the fine print on the back it says hose off within 30 seconds they're telling you that for a reason uh and the stiff bristle brushes eventually you're going to just put surface scratches in it and uh, no different than it would on the paint of the car speaking of care of the wheels i never drive home with hot wheels hot brakes and immediately wash my wheels like i let everything cool down is that a smart practice yeah i mean i'm I, <laughs> I don't, I've never read it in a textbook, so to speak, yeah. but, but that's what I do also. Um, I, don't I think like many of idea. you probably do the same. Yeah, it, I, for me, it's more about the brakes yeah. than it is even about that's the true. wheel. That's true, yeah. um, Just let them cool down or, naturally. Or, or, you know, if you're choosing, like I would never, and I've seen people do this, like they come, their wheels are hot, and then they go and they grab the wheel cleaner, yeah, which and is, they spray it on there, yeah. and it boils on the surface, and they like walk away. Yeah. Like I've seen this while I've, you know, washed other cars, I'm like, oh, that, it like, Oh, that's terrible. So don't do that. Always want to make sure your wheels are cool. And if you're going to use something on your wheel, use it, tend to it, get it done and get it off. Like right. don't walk away and go have a sandwich. Right. <laughs> and especially on, you know, especially on a car like a Porsche, you guys take care of your cars, right? We do. So they're never going to be to the point where they're so dirty and grimy and caked on with brake dust. You haven't seen Damon's car. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Damon. He set me up. What was I did, supposed to do? I powder coated my wheels brown. <laughs> he did. He did. Um, but so if you've been keeping up with the maintenance of it, uh, soap and water should be all you need to, to get them clean. And you shouldn't need any real harsh chemicals. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, no different than, than, than the paint of the car. Okay. I'm going to throw you for a loop on this one. Let's this one is from Charles Whitfield. What is the best finish for magnesium wheels? And specifically, a classic mini light wheel. Ooh. Ooh. Um, That's your world. Yeah, right. Um, so magnesium wheels are, are a difficult animal. They, they, they can be painted, and honestly, they can be powder coated. Most, uh, most people are afraid of them because, uh, oh, magnesium's flammable, right? Or, <laughs> or it's going to suddenly explode if it's in an oven. It's not. Um, the big thing with magnesium is... If you're going to refinish them, if you strip them, as soon as that magnesium is unprotected, it literally starts to corrode like immediately. immediately. It's, it's insanely fast. I mean, you won't see it visually with your eyes, but it's, it's crazy fast. Um, we, we have a customer who's, who's a big collector and had a uh, 2000 GT Toyota uh, from the 60s, and he had a climate controlled in, in a, a garage. The humidifier went up. Uh, or the dehumidifier, dehumidifier went up, I'm yeah. sorry. And the wheels just, I mean, they, they, oh, they, no. they went like within days. And so they were brought to us um, and we had to redo them. And, you know, it depends. It depends on the state of the wheels. If they're really pitted, you know, it, it's, it, it, magnesium can be welded, but it's not easy. Um, a lot of people, especially on an older classic car, will try to use body filler in there. Uh, 
I'm not a fan of using body filler in the wheel, but you can. Um, but usually they end up getting painted. Um, you know, that set in particular. Too hard to recover from. Yeah, that set in particular, we powder coated them with a, in, a, in, a, in a primer, and then they, they actually came in a brown, a uh, pretty specific brown, which is kind of weird to think about, but mm. Google it, I'm right. Uh, and, and so we, we, we had the paint mixed up to this brown, we painted them, and then we, we put on a clear coat. And as uh, far as I know, they're, they're still okay a couple years later. But magnesium is a tricky one because it does corrode very, very quickly. All right. So next, what I want to do is you brought a, I think, a two or three piece wheel. Mm -hmm. We want to show people sort of what it takes to restore one of those wheels. All right. So, yeah, that Porsche wheel that we looked at was a two piece, two -piece. wheel. This is a, this is a custom three piece wheel and there are no bolts in it. So that's the, the face. That's one piece. Right? Uh, we just did these in black, if you can't tell. Uh, and then... And you got halves. And then you have halves. You've got the outer hoop and the, the inner hoop, or the lip and the hoop, or the barrel, whatever you want to call it. So um, is there a gasket that goes? No, here? on these wheels, there's no gasket. Some three-piece wheels have gaskets. Uh, so this will don't. seal enough to be... No, oh. this gets a seal put on it. So what... Oh, okay. so uh, a couple different ways to handle this. We've seen, uh, I mean, I've seen some wheels straight from fact, the factory that are sealed just with like silicone, just regular clear silicone like you do you'd really? in the bathroom at home. Huh. Yeah, uh, it's not what we choose to do. Uh, we kind of go overkill yep. uh, just because that's, that's what I like to do. I like to know it's done and, and, and that's it. So what we'll do is once we get each piece done, we'll put it back together, we'll assemble it, and we'll use, um, we'll use high temperature RTV. RTV, okay, yep. yep. Um, and and black, ultra black at that, which is rated to over 500 uh, degrees, mm -hmm. because if it's good enough for an oil pan gasket, it's certainly good enough for a wheel. Um, the biggest thing with a multi-piece wheel like this is when you put it back together with all the, the nuts and the bolts, um, which are over, over here, um, once, once the wheel is being put back together, um, the way to, you need to make sure you properly torque it. Just like when you put the wheel on the car, you're gonna to torque down the lug nuts to the spec of the car. You need to torque down the nuts and bolts of a, of a multi-piece wheel, whether it's two or three, uh, to the correct torque. Usually- Is there a pattern that you follow? Yeah, usually uh, the torque is somewhere between 18 to 22 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not, it's not much, oh. you know. Um, I mean, if you start wrenching on these things, it, it, it could go badly very quickly because these are not big nuts and bolts um, and you can, you can stretch them out. So 18 to 22 depends on the manufacturer. If you don't know, then Find out. <laughs> find out if you can. I mean, if you, if you le legitimately cannot find out what the correct torque is for your specific wheel, um, and there's nobody in the forum that's going to tell you what it is, um, you know, if you go 20 to 22, you should be fine. Okay. It also depends on how many bolts you have. Um, so this wheel, I should have counted before I came here, but I didn't. This wheel's got a bunch. This, this is somewhere between 30 to 40 bolts all the way around the, uh, the BBS. Uh, Porsche wheel is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, six, 16 bolts. So that makes a difference too. Now, Vu, to your question, is there a pattern? Yeah, um, uh, opposite, almost like lug nuts. Lug you nuts, wanna okay. do a, a star pattern, but when you're doing it times 30 or 40, it's, a, it's a, certainly a multi-point star. Um, what we do is we'll put in either four or five, the, the, you know, a five spoke wheel like this that has a hole at, at, at each of the end of the, uh, of, of each spoke is pretty easy. We'll put in the five and tighten those down and then test it to make sure it's true and it's everything seated together properly. And then we'll go and do the rest of the, the bolts again in that, in that star pattern. I couldn't help myself, but I wanted to see how loosely or not loosely this bolt fits into that hole. It's pretty loose. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. was surprised. Yeah. Well, and you know, each manufacturer makes them a little bit differently. This wheel in particular is a Boyd Coddington wheel. Mm. So it's off of a, uh, a Corvette. 
the tolerances of this one, I was actually, uh, we, I can't say we've ever done a Boyd Coddington wheel that I can think of. I thought it should be um, like perfect. Yeah, this one's a little bit looser Loose. than, than Loose. Yeah, yeah, than, than okay. but you know, it, it's fine. It drove in, it'll drive out of our shop. Yeah. Uh, the BBS, yeah, super tight, you know, uh, tolerances. But you'd kind of expect that from a German wheel. There you go. I didn't want to say and then get all the hate mail. Yeah. You can send it his way. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, probably one of the first questions we had tonight was from Paul Kudra. He has uh, a, a three-piece wheels, I believe, uh, uh, HREs. Mm -hmm. I think it's an older wheel, 17-inch in diameter. But he says he can't get the 17-inch. I mean, he must have messed up a half, and he's looking for another half. Mm. What what, uh, uh, what suggestions? So HRE isn't... isn't providing parts for 17s anymore is probably, probably the deal. It, yeah. um, so two things to do. If you, I mean, go online, go on eBay, see if anybody's selling something that, that works. Other than that, um, the best suggestion is count how many um, bolt holes you have in that, in that lip or in the, in the, in the barrel and, and, uh, and, and the spacing, okay? Just like lug nut spacing, you know, Porsche, five by 130, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you might be able to find another manufacturer who has the same uh, bolt pattern for, the, for, for a three-piece wheel. And then you might be able just to slap another lip on there. The other thing is you gotta measure um, how, how big that, that lip is. So this one, again, is from a Corvette. This is the front wheel. And this is- uh, So this determines your offset. E e well. Yeah, where this sits oh, in. Oh, where this sits in. Okay. Yeah, okay. but the lip itself, this is a three inch lip, right? The rears on this car have a five inch lip. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, so if we put the wrong lip on the wrong right, uh, right. face, going, putting it back together, uh, it's going <laughs> to be really, really bad. So just know what you're looking at here, uh, whether it's a three inch lip, a five inch lip, or if you need the barrel, you got to measure, you know, the size of the barrel. And most of these manufacturers, measure to to the bead not all the way to that that bottom uh lip okay it's just to the bead uh and 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 the seat so all right it. so let's uh let's put this back down and we'll we're almost at the top of the hour and i still have so many questions for you but let's show them the non-repairable wheel i think this is important for people to see when you just throw in the towel if this happens to you absolutely <laughs> do a little switch here Hopefully you're enjoying the segment. If you are, let us know and let, let us know what you like about it. And we'll do more of it. And if you don't like something, you can tell us that too. But anyways, uh, again, if you're watching, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And let's show you one that is not repairable. Another German cousin. Another German cousin. This Mercedes. one would be a Mercedes, yes. So this one hit a pothole and got bent on the face. Bending on the face isn't necessarily a death blow. Uh, we can straighten out bends on the, on the face. That's not the issue with this one. This one bent too far and ended up uh, cracking. Oh, cracking. And if you can see that right there, Ooh. maybe we can flip it around and, and show you from the front. So once it cracks like that on the front, we advise a new wheel. Mm. Not to say again, not to say we couldn't straighten it and we couldn't weld it and then refinish the area or the whole wheel. But again, from a liability perspective and, um, and a cost perspective, you know, this is an older wheel. It just made sense to replace it. Um, and also, you know, interestingly, this is a powder coated wheel. Mm -hmm. this is, this, we powder coated this wheel, I'm going to say a year and a half ago. Um, he was nice Frequent enough customer. To, to return to <laughs> us with it messed up. But even with all of that stress, uh, the powder coat did break, but it only broke in that one spot. Right, it held up. It, flexed it held here. up. It flexed everywhere else. Mm, um, nice. So. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. We went through a lot of different topics. Thank you so much, Sam, Absolutely. for all of your knowledge, all of your time. A couple of things I want to let you know about Tech Tactics Live. The next one will be May 11th. Uh, we'll be actually going over to our buddies over at Benchmark Motors and talking about wheel alignments, wheel alignment 101, what you need to know, all the terms, so on and so forth. Uh, for those of you that want a GT4 RS and don't have an allocation, 
we have an allocation for PCA members and you can win a chance by entering the spring raffle. There you go, the GT4 RS could be yours. And finally, the podcast, uh, we're still going strong. We have podcast episode 13, I believe, coming out soon. If you haven't checked that out, I'm proud to say we're doing so well with the podcast and people are enjoying it. Try it, you might just like it. And then finally, uh, follow us through all the different social media channels. And I don't know if we have a screen here, but hopefully you've registered for Porsche Parade in the Poconos and we look forward to seeing you there. So until next time, we'll see you later.